products that we will be using in this demonstration are AutoCAD Architecture version 2016 and TurboCAD Pro Platinum 2017, although most of the features that we will show are also available in TurboCAD Deluxe 2017. The first thing that we should discuss are the similarities in the interface between AutoCAD and TurboCAD. AutoCAD uses this ribbon interface, which is essentially a collection of similar functioning tools. If you see the drop-downs, you click and hold, and then it opens up all the line tools, and likewise on the different arc tools that are available. Now TurboCAD works in the same way, in that each of these groups is a drop-down indicator, allowing you to open that set of tools by clicking and holding on the tool. If you hover over a tool, you will get the name of the tool. You can also access tools through the tools palette by firstly right-clicking in the grey area to open the customized dialog or you could click the customized controls gear button at the top left corner. In the TurboCAD dialog you can see there are a wide range of different palettes. Comparing this to AutoCAD that makes extensive use of palettes that can be dragged around and docked on the different sides of the screen. Typically, the palettes can be undocked by dragging the title bar into the middle of the screen. In TurboCAD, you have similar functionality where you can open the palettes that have been docked on the right-hand side. The Auto Hide option will allow you to force the palettes to stay open and docked on the right-hand side. You can then change the active palette by clicking the title bar at the bottom. These palettes can also be dragged and docked on different sides of the screen or possibly on a second screen. You can redock the palettes by dragging on the active blue drop areas that appear during the dragging process. When using TurboCAD, it is a good idea to have at least the design director and the selection info palettes available. At this point, we do not need the rendering palette, so that can be dragged to the middle of the screen and closed by clicking the X at the top corner, thereby removing it from the main set of palettes on the right hand side. At the bottom of the screen you will see both the TurboCAD and AutoCAD interfaces for the model and paper space, allowing you to switch between the design area and the printing area. In TurboCAD the toolbars themselves can also be dragged around and docked on different sides of the screen. You can see the modify palette is typically docked on the right hand side of the screen next to the palettes. You can turn on the other toolbars by right-clicking the unused grey toolbar area. In TurboCAD it is often useful to have the Snaps toolbar turned on as well as the Transform and Copy toolbars. Then these newly turned on toolbars can be dragged and docked in the available space at the top of the screen. So in summary, the interface works in a similar way with palettes and workspaces that can be opened and closed and docked on different sides of the screen. The toolbars represent collections of tools in a similar fashion to the ribbon in AutoCAD. Additionally, in TurboCAD, there is a tools palette which provides similar functionality by grouping together sets of similar tools. It is sometimes useful to switch the display mode to be icons and full prompts in order to get a full description of the functionality of each tool. Alternatively, icons and tips will show an abbreviated version of each tool. At the top of the palette, you can switch between the different groups of tools in a similar fashion to the different ribbons in AutoCAD. This palette is particularly useful for browsing most of the tools that are available 